I, I spoke in the beginning, sort of we've been doing benchmarking now since the, nearly the very beginning of Swoop. So our Yammer benchmark, we've also benchmarked in teams, uh, but this is our seventh uh, Yammer benchmarking report. So um, uh, let me just get my my movement right. So uh, basically, I'm just going to go through, I'm not going to spend a lot of time, but go through the, the highlights for the, um, for, for um, just the highlights of the report. And then uh, I'm going to announce who the leading uh, organisations were uh, in our benchmarking. This is something that we've we've done each year to, to acknowledge the, the leading organisations. Uh, this year, uh, which is a little bit different, we actually did a very deep dive into the communities, which, which we have done in the past, but we haven't actually acknowledged them separately. So this year we've done that and we've also looked at the most engaging posts and so forth. So a lot more stories. The report is quite comprehensive, you know, well over, I think, let me just get to the next slide. Um, I think, yes, yeah, um, well over 100 pages in, in the report. This year we profiled uh, 75 organisations we analysed, uh, a little bit lower than previous the previous year or two because this year we wanted to focus on a particular period and the period we wanted to focus on was organisations moving into the hybrid period. So last year we captured the period across the pre and the, and the post working from home. This year, we wanted to see them going back to the office. Now, we, we didn't realise this was going to be an extended back to the office, and we all don't know how long that's going to be. But we thought this was a very rich period to analyse how organisations were connecting and collaborating in Yammer. So we reduced the numbers, but having said that, we actually covered more people. So we've had bigger organisations this time, you know, and, you know, 4,300 4, communities. Uh, over nearly three million employees, so so we covered a, a lot of ground still. So, um, and as I said before, when we identify who those leading organisations and leading communities are, we go and seek them out. We don't have uh, their actual the names of we have the names of the organisations. We don't have the names of the communities or anybody involved. Uh, Swoop only works with metadata. But we go back with the IDs and, and it's just as big a surprise sometimes for that, for our contacts in those organisations as it is to us when we find out uh, who they are and what they're doing. And I must say, you know, after seven years, we, we're pretty confident about our measures. You know, we know that, you know, when we go to an organisation with an ID, that it is going to be a high performing community or organisation overall. So. I'm just going to go through the overview now, uh, the brief overview of a 100 plus page report. Uh, the first thing is something that we saw at the beginning of last year, and this is the emergence of communities that are what we're calling well-being communities, right? So the health and well-being ones, largely we used to call them non-work ones, but now we're calling them, you know, well-being communities. So they're communities that uh, uh, may be sharing um, uh, food recipes or or where you are in the office or where you're working from or, you know, not specifically work focused. But what we've found is these these communities are the ones that are actually engaging people most broadly across the organisation now. These are the communities that are bringing the organisation together uh, in the in the COVID period, at least. Now, those of you that have been using Yammer for many, many years, you know, like in the early days of Yammer, I remember the, the things that community managers feared the most was that the most engaging communities would be non-work ones. And I can remember one of our, I think it was our second client, a large telco, uh, you know, when we analysed their communities, I can remember them saying, please, please don't let the jokes community be the leading community, you know, we'll get shut down. So, but now we're in a situation where, in fact, those leaders are actually participating in these because it's all part of the organisation's wellbeing. Uh, this year, uh, beyond that, uh, we are seeing communities, purpose-driven communities. So these are communities around what we'd call societal issues, you know, things like Black Lives Matter, Me Too, uh, sustainability, uh, and of course, vaccine policy. You know, these are becoming very active communities now, especially in the US, and we're starting to see that in other parts of the world now. Now this has led a little bit of led to a little bit of discomfort with the leadership in these organisations. Uh, we've heard that uh, in a couple instances that that the leadership were even considering shutting down Yammer because of this style of conversation happening on Yammer. 
But thankfully, that didn't happen. And in fact, they've risen to the challenge and they're actually positioning, they're, they're, they're stating their positions to their organisations around these societal issues. And I think, you know, we, we've all read about the, you know, as the millennials are moving into the workforce now, I think the, the oldest millennials are getting close to 40 now. Uh, you know, they have been purpose driven from, from the start, actually. So we're just seeing that evolution of, of the workforce into the Yammer space. And thankfully, the leadership seem to be sort of stepping up to that challenge. In terms of uh, uh, the actual activity in Yammer, in fact, over the last couple of years, we have seen the active participation drop a little bit. And this, this is substantially because of the introduction of teams. You know, we've seen now organisations have been running teams for, you know, two or three years. Now, before that, Yammer was the only digital place that people used to collaborate on. So it's, it makes sense that that might drop off. What we have seen, though, is a, a very big increase in the readership in Yammer. And we put some of that down to the fact that you can now access Yammer through Teams and through Outlook. And, you know, it's, it's hidden there as the community space, if you like. So it's being surfaced in the other tools. And I think that's that has led to an increase in, in Yammer readership. Uh, you know, it's one thing we did fear when we saw that was that Yammer was going to be started start to be looked at as a place to announce things or for leaders just to announce things. Thankfully, I think with our leaders, we aren't seeing that. We're seeing two-way engagement. So we're seeing leaders when they are actually announcing things to their organisations, they're open for that two-way communication. And as you've seen from the, the, the leading communities, that's actually what's happening. So um, let me get to the uh, next thing. Now, uh, Teams and Yammer itself, you know, sort of about half of the uh, the uh, the um, groups in Teams and you know a good proportion of the groups in Yammer look identical, right? So we run algorithms over both Teams and Yammer, and we're able to classify different groups according to their patterns of interaction. And I would say that 50% of the Teams and Yammer uh, groups. Uh, uh, non-distinguishable. In other words, we just don't know how to man where we should be putting these larger groups. You know, it's pretty clear. I mean, the guidance around communities and teams is pretty clear, but in practice, we're seeing some confusion around those bigger groups. Now, I think there's still work to do in doing that. We heard stories about people moving communities into teams, mainly because they think, well, why don't we just use one space? Let's just use Teams rather than use Yammer. And then they move them back again. We've heard that more than once because it's just not the right place to be. You know, so I think there'll be a little bit of this toing and froing for a while. And I think it's, you know, it's something that, that we might expect that groups might migrate one way or the other, depending on how they evolve. Uh, I guess the the other thing that we did was that we ran uh, sentiment analysis across all of the communities. And we're looking for, initially we're saying, well, I wonder who the happiest communities are, all right? So, and of course you could always say, well, who are the grumpiest communities at the other end? Uh, what we found with the happiest communities, that they did align with those those most engaging communities, those those social non-work non communities, they were, they were really stress relief places for, for an organisation or people that have been locked down in their homes, working on teams day to day, being quite nearly burnt out at times, you know, to be able to find that stress relief and go to Yammer and 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 just talk with your colleagues about anything, if you like. Sometimes it wasn't just, you know, social things. Sometimes there was some, you'll, you'll hear in the, about some of the stories about, uh, you know, communities like, you know, where am I working now? And people's sharing the interesting places that they're working from and you know that's engaging people in the organization as well so we saw that and also we did we did have a sneak look at the negative ones now we didn't really want to expose who are the grumpiest communities in Yammer but in fact we didn't find that at all when you find negative negative sentiment in fact it's not negative it's not the people being negative it's the context that the context that's negative you know so if you're doing uh, cyber security or, or customer complaints or what have you, and you're addressing those with energy, that's a good thing, right? You know, so, um, and that's what we saw. So, you know, there really isn't a lot of toxic stuff on Yammer. I know that's something that's that concerns people a lot, but, you know, largely we don't see a lot of that. You know, and I think this is really, I think we're starting to look at this sentiment measure more as a measure of energy, you know. So when we see energy in communities, we know that good things are happening, whether it's in a positive or a negative context. 
So, um, so I want to move on now to uh, this is what we you know we normally do is we identify the enterprise winners, and this this year we've done it via the region. So we divide up the the winners into three categories: uh, large, medium, and and small. The numbers are actually active participants. Uh, we do this because our measures obviously it's easy to be small, uh, cohesive. And you know, like a good community, if you're a small organisation rather than a big organisation. So we think, to be fair, we've divided them up into categories. This year, we've divided them up into regions as well. And uh, what I can tell you is that uh, certainly in the Americas, you know, Wiley Real Foundations have been regular members of our leader group. In APAC, ANZ, Medibank, and NRMA have all been there before. You know, not necessarily every year, but most years. Uh, in EMEA, where we are now. They're all new. So, so Transport for London, Agreco, Imagination Technologies are all new to our leaders list, and we're quite excited about this. This is new stories to, to share. All of these organisations have shared their stories with us around the enterprise. We've got 11 case studies in the report, and it makes wonderful reading, inspiring reading, in fact. So, uh, now, as I said, we did go deep into the communities, looked at the top overall communities. You know, a couple uh, we'll mention uh, that have case studies in the report. KFC, uh, it's, it's, it's a worldwide brand you'll all know about. The Leukemia Foundation is in Australia. So uh, they, were, they had some very, well, they were our top communities, right? We also measured dimensions of communities, the most innovative communities, and those those are communities that are very strong on curiosity, diversity, engagement, and so forth. And also those communities that that have high participation. Yeah, you know, there's everybody in, and so forth. And you can see the names of the people we've got there. We put those those ones in because they're the ones that were able to provide us with a with a case study. Uh, I'd like to mention the innovation ones. We did focus a little on that report because because those of you uh, that have studied innovation and history will know that the best time to to undertake or, or attempt a radical innovation is where after a, a global disruption you know so we saw in 2001 the dot-com bust you know we saw e-commerce really take off after that period we saw after the financial crisis in 2008 that the gig economy arose out of that I'm just wondering what's going to rise out of this 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 um, uh, crisis that we're moving through right now. So, um, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to Pete just to go through a couple of the thing, the innovation case studies that we've had, and then we'll move on from there into the actual into an actual case study with with you. So, um, this is over to you, Pete. So, um, tell Thanks, us a bit about Reed. innovative communities. <laughs> yeah. I I don't want to go into too much detail on this because obviously the best way to learn about these communities is to download the benchmarking report and read the full detailed case study. But I did want to just call out these two examples as, again, my obsession with ideas for people to steal, um, but also inspirational examples of Yammer use. Um, Victoria Police uh, actually using Yammer to identify alleged criminals. So. I'm just going to leave it at that, actually, and say if you want to know the detail, download the benchmarking report. Because well, let, let me add to that, Pete, because I think that, you know, I guess Victoria Police were one of the ones that we highlighted because they were new to us, in fact. And uh, uh, if any of you understand how police go about sort of identifying criminals, you know, it's a very long, uh, involved process of taking videos and then through, going through each video, trying to find out what that face is, then emailing that off to the next people, and then they're going to have to go through it well, identify the prospects and or suspects. I shouldn't say prospects, suspects, <laughs> and they move on again. You know, so so this is a very slow process, and it can take you know weeks, if not months, to get to a point where you can even do anything with it. You now, Victoria Police, they just stuck the 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 video on Yammer, and you can think about that. Everybody's looking at it at the same time. They're feeding back at the same time. We thought this is an incredible innovation, you know, and it's something that we wanted to highlight in 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 the report. Uh, sorry, Pete, I know that we're we're not running. <laughs> I thought I'd jump in at least and say, you know, because well, I, I I do I did it, I was on the interview for this one, and, and I just, the, it's such a good example, isn't it? And and it re it really resonates with me because um, I know in my previous organisation where we used Swoop for Yammer, I had to jump through a whole lot of IT hurdles to to get Swoop in use, and and there was always IT questions and security questions around Yammer use. 
And I, I kind of wish that I'd had this Victoria Police case study to be able to say, you know, the police are using this to solve crimes. I'm sure that us sharing our spreadsheet with a colleague internally by a Yammer is not as high risk as that. And um, it, it just yeah. really resonates with me personally. This, this just so happy that the, the community manager in Victoria Police is is actually a, an operating sergeant. You know, she actually took, she's taken time out of that role and she will go back to that role eventually. And this is what we're seeing in Yama that some of the community managers now are coming from, they're not career community managers, they're coming out of the front line and they get, as she told us, you know, they get a lot, they get quite a lot of, respect when they come out to talk to them about about what they're doing because you know they've been in the job themselves and I think that's a very powerful sort of way of recruiting uh, community managers into into that role you know if they come from a, a front line or a context I think it's very important sure uh, yeah absolutely absolutely I can see Jeff my colleague Jeff yeah well Jeff head there as, a, as an example of that yourself hey yeah. Jeff um Jeff yeah. was uh, was flight flight attendant with KLM um, who moved into community management and then found his way from there to swoop. So yeah, um, yeah it's a it's a really good story to see. Um, the engage squared example is great. This is this is um, they basically developed a bot that randomly at mentions an employee and asks them a question. Um, so this is a, a, conver a conversation starter, I guess, and has led to lots of interesting chats um, and connections between people uncovering uh, some really interesting factoids about people and just create really proactively creating connections amongst colleagues. Uh, I think it's a, just a really, really nice idea, that one. Um, if we, is there anything you want to add on the Engage Squared example, no, Laurie? The, uh, the clever thing about the, the, the bot is that it's not, you know, you could keep thinking about, you know, what bad things bots can do when they're doing, you know, when they, they misbehave, but this one doesn't misbehave, it knows, you know, it knows to step in not too much and just, you know, mm. when things slow down a little bit, you know, just to, to heat up the conversation a bit. And uh, so apparently in practice, it's been a, a very practical thing. So it just keeps the conversation warm. It's like having that that uh, moderator in the background, sort of just when things start to slow up a bit, it just jumps in and, you know, just asks some innocent questions and then gets the conversation going again. So. I think we're going to see more of this. I think it's I think it's a, a very interesting innovation. And I yeah, might indeed. say with Engage Squared, that came out of uh, one of their communities were identified as the most one of the most innovative ones. It was actually their social community. And, and, and on reflection, the CEO told us, well, you know, we've had a lot of innovations out of that social community. You know, it's there just for social stuff. But he said, you know, we've made some incredible, and they're only a small company, but we said we've made some quite big, connections between people that normally wouldn't mm. have happened. And so, yeah, we shouldn't overlook the fact that some of these things we call non-work communities are actually work communities. Indeed. But I'll let it back yeah. to you now. We want to, we want to listen to some of the some of the customers because they're, they're, they're the ones with the interesting stories. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I'm, I'm going to invite um, Paul from Agreco to, to come off mute um, and say welcome to you, Paul, because we've asked Paul to come along and just speak to what I think is a really uh, great example of Yammer used for engagement and other business benefits. Um, really, it's about the power of a photo, but I won't say much more, Paul. I might throw to you and just say, um, perhaps you could introduce yourself quickly and and sort of tell us the story behind this picturesque Greco. Yeah, great. Thanks, Pete. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. So, uh, yeah, my name's Paul. I'm head of digital comms here at Greco. Um, we've been using Yammer here for uh just about two years but i've been working with yammer since way back when uh even before microsoft um bought them out so i know yammer very well um and, and what you're looking at here is one of our really successful communities on our yammer network which is picturesque agreco now with with agreco we're a relatively small company we're we're circa five thousand people but we're actually massively geographically spread we've got engineers and technicians working in some really quite remote and widespread parts of the world from the Amazonian rainforest to um, large open cast mines in the Australian outback. Um, we've got teams running world stage events such as the Olympics. Um, so we really have got people everywhere and it's, it's quite hard to get a grasp on the, the breadth of, of what we do. Um, so we set up a group 
a community in Yama called Picturesque Greco. And we invited people to share any nice pictures they might have of where they happen to be working at that moment. Um, and the community just literally blew up and we were overwhelmed with some some quite amazing images actually, which really open uh, open the lens on on just how much uh, the world that Greco covers. Um, it, it's a great community for new starters to come and take a look and really get an understanding of, of the diversity of, of what it is we do and the countries that we work in. But what's been really great for, for um, me and my team in internal comms is that we've used this community to actually harvest a, a truckload of really awesome on-brand images that we use in all sorts of scenarios, whether that just be backdrops for our internet news articles, um, we've actually used images from this uh, community in our uh, annual report, which went to the city uh, before we got bought out and turned private. That was um, we, yes, yeah, so we we use these these images everywhere. So there's actually a cost saving attached to this, which we never expected mm. to see because beforehand, you know, like lots of other companies, we would probably go to the likes of Getty Images and try and find an image that kind of looked half what we wanted to do. Um, and of course, being an, an organisation like a Greco. We've got products such as you're seeing on the screen now. So these, you know, these mobile generators and heaters and cooling units, you're not going to find those on, on Getty. So having this army of images to hand now is, is really quite fantastic. And it's also started to appeal to, to people's sense of competition because people are desperate now to not only get their picture up on, on Pictures of Greco, but to see it being used somewhere uh, within the company. <laughs> Um, so, so what we do to try and entice that, and not just from this community, but a lot of them come from this community, is once a month uh, we update the, the masthead of the all company feed with an image supplied by one of our colleagues. The colleague gets a shout out and a mention, um, and that's really that's really uh, caught on and, and caught the imagination of a lot of people. So we're getting lots of people who now will ping me and, and at mention me on their post. Go, just to let you know, it's a rather cracking picture I've just posted, and maybe we'll see that in. Uh, in your company feed or preferably in, in you know some of our external marketing that goes out as well so yeah quite quite a good success story for us and some money saving on the side too excellent it's really really good uh, to sort of think about that the financial benefit um of of just the simple act of sharing a photo i mean what a great idea to to just make it so easy for people to get involved um one of the things I, I'm I'm a bit of an employee experience obsessive, and I, I look at this and I go, wow, what a, what an awesome way to give everybody across the organisation a true insight into the frontline working environment and the environments that you work in. Like you said at the start, around the globe, yeah. how how would I sitting in a corporate office comprehend what life is like in an open cast mine in Australia? I guess have you noticed um, sort of people feeling that sen greater sense of understanding the broader experience? Yeah, absolutely. And and in fact, the, the shot that you stopped on there is, um, is is a classic one where our technicians and engineers are massively proud of the installations they do. There's, 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 I mean, I'm a little bit OCD, so I'm loving these cable tracks <laughs> that they lay out. So we're, we're seeing quite a few, um, I would say probably 80% of the images that get shared in this community are from frontline workers, you know, wow. technicians, field engineers. It's not, it's not really... Uh, knowledge workers sat in our head offices we do get some of those you know we've got we've got some nice offices in some nice locations but i would say the bulk of the stuff coming through is is literally from the front line and and those guys really really value um seeing their images being used and when they get you know people like the ceo comments on an image they've posted uh you know the, the ripples for that go far and wide and you know these, these are guys that would never have any chance of interacting with, with the ceo or any of the senior leadership team because yeah. they are in the Amazonian rainforest, or they are in the Australian outback, or they're somewhere else crazy. But this gives them a, a you know a vehicle to to show off what they do, be proud of what they do, and and get some recognition from the guys at the at the very top, which is which is fantastic. Brilliant, so, such a great example, and I'm sure there are many people um, in this in this festival session who have the trouble of how do you get those frontline remote workers to engage. Um, and I myself and many others, I'm sure, have, have had the story of, oh, you know, they're engineers, they're out in the field, they're too busy doing their work to, to get on Yammer. And you've come up with such a simple idea that, that then just becomes part of their, their sense of pride. I just, yeah, it's, it's yeah. Big, big praise to you for this one. I'm, I'm 
I'm hoping we see a lot of people suddenly starting starting up their picturesque insert company name communities after hearing you hearing you talk on that. Um, just before before we let you go and get out of the spotlight, Paul, um, I did want to just get you to speak to this, which I think is something really interesting that that you do with the swoop data um, that you that you access um, to kind of in, boost engagement within a Greco. So as well as coming up with amazing, simple to engage with ideas, you're also using data to, to help people um, adopt and, and, and use Yammer as a, as a useful business and engagement tool. So what's this we're looking at here on screen? So this is our uh, this is our monthly Yammer engagement dashboard that I produce every month. It's obviously powered by Swoop. I wouldn't be able to get this data without uh, a great tool like Swoop behind me. Um, and there's there's two pages to this. So the first one is you know the traditional kind of headlines you'd expect to see from an analytics report. You know how many posts have we had this month? How many replies has that generated? How, many, how much of the stuff is happening in the public space or in the private space? How responsive are we being to to post, etc., um, and also introducing the concept of the um, the sweet personas there as well. So you know how much of us are responders, are, are, are we catalysts, etc. So that's kind of traditional and, and perhaps what you'd expect to see. The the second page is the one that's really caught the the attention and the imagination of of the Greco colleagues, which is our movers and shakers. So this is our top five groups, um, either by percentage of active users or by just pure member activity. So we have the the, the top five groups there. We have our top topics. So just trying to really introduce the um, the concept of topics. It's not something that we used to use very well, but we're really starting to see that take off now, thanks to highlighting it in this report. Um, but the one that really gets everyone excited is, and this surprised me actually how excited they get about this, but the, the top 10 Yamo influencers has really has really got people's attention. And you know, people are clamoring now to find out, well, what do I need to do to be able to get into this? Point? <laughs> what are these guys doing that's different to me? Um, and there's 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 uh, one of our colleagues who works in our, our IT function. He does a lot on Yammer. Um, every month when I post, he's always just outside the top ten. And every month I can I can guarantee he pings me a message on Teams saying, I "Can't believe I'm not in again. What do I need to do to shift the dial to get myself into into the top 10? So this this is this is uh, really quite nice. And and what's been good for us as well. I mean, you can see there at number six on this particular example, but. Our CEO, um, as was, was uh, constantly being shown up in, in the top 10. And that's not because internal comms were ghostwriting for him or anything like that. He was um, you know, a real advocate of, of Yammer and very proactive. So seeing the CEO list up there, we're actually seeing now as, as the months go on, we're seeing more and more of our senior leadership team actually pop up in this top 10. Because right. they're looking at the fact, oh, the CEO's on, perhaps I should be doing a bit more. Um, yeah. Yeah, so so it's uh, it, it's a relatively simple thing to do, but um, it, but it really has lit a fire under people. And only this morning, I haven't had a chance to actually publish the report for November yet. I've done it now, but this morning I had people pinging me. As soon as I logged on to Teams, people were pinging me saying, when's the report coming out? When's the report coming out? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it, it's great. And thanks to Sweet for, uh, for powering it. Wonderful. Oh, no, it's, it's, it's outstanding work. And, um, yeah, I can see the uh, the award for the medium-sized organisation top collaborative performance that there on your on your on your shelf behind you, it's not a surprise. Hearing you talk, the passion and the ideas and the energy you bring to it, it's not a surprise that um, Agreco is winning awards with with you looking after it, Paul. So really appreciate you coming along today to share your story. Um, we we're we're running a little behind on time. I just want to say there's a QR code to download the benchmarking report. I think the link has been shared in the chat as well. What we'll do now is we'll we'll have four minutes before the next session kicks off in the main stage where people can jump into the discussion room. Um, so I don't know, Jeff, perhaps you can share the link to the discussion room in the chat. People can click on that. It will put you on hold in this meeting, in, in this main stage. You go to the discussion room where Paul, Laurie and I will be um, just to, to ask any questions, deal with any any sort of questions or thoughts you've got um, so if we all click that link and head across over to the discussion room.